welcome to Cooking With Me, Mama Pearl. And today we're making a semi-Sicilian meatloaf. I took a couple of different recipes and I really like this one. Um, so we have one pound of ground hamburger in here, okay? And then we're going to beat an egg. One little egg, we're gonna punish it and beat it tiny, okay? So you're going to beat the meatloaf. The meatloaf. The egg. The egg beat. You may want to do this before you put it in because it helps hold everything together, okay? And then you're just going to pour it right on top of your meat, okay? And then you're going to add three cloves of garlic, which I have minced garlic here. Because remember with meatloaf, you need your stuff chopped really small. You want it not to be outstanding. You want it to really incorporate in your meatloaf. Um, so we're going to put three cloves of garlic and we're going to put one cup of chopped onion. I chopped this ahead with the chopper. See how fine and chopped it is? Because you don't want big old pieces in your meatloaf. Because this meatloaf we're going to roll and so if you have too big of a pieces, the onions pieces will just fly out of your meatloaf. So I chopped this earlier with a food chopper, okay? And you put that in there. And then you're gonna put one teaspoon of salt. And a teaspoon of salt in here, okay? And half a teaspoon of pepper. I love pepper. Pepper makes everything. I almost tried to buy new pepper. See, one half teaspoon of pepper. And we put that in there. And we set these here. And then we're going to put one cup of seasoned breadcrumbs. If you want to season your own, that's good. Um, but I like to buy the Italian. Um, seasoned breadcrumbs because it's easier. So you're going to put one whole cup of seasoned breadcrumbs in here. Ooh, I love seasoned breadcrumbs. They are your friend. Okay. Then you're going to put two tablespoons of, let's see if I can say it right, Worcestershire sauce. Or tablespoons. Where's my tablespoon? There it is. Now, I don't know if you've ever re read the label of Worcestershire. Worcestershire. <laughs> that is too funny. But this is vinegar and water, molasses, and it has anchovies and tamarind. It has good stuff. Most people don't realize what all that's in it. But that gives your meatloaf a really good, good flavor. So there's one. Uh, put one teaspoon of oregano. This is a half teaspoon, so I'll put two of these in. Oregano. Oregano. Okay. And then we're going to stir it just a little bit. You don't. Whatever you do, you do not want to overmix your meatloaf. But we want to get the spices all incorporated in there and the eggs. So we're going to stir it just a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to put three tablespoons of ketchup. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, we're going to set this here. And then we're going to put one teaspoon of parsley. Just give it a little, you know, Italian flavor there. And then I have Italian seasoning. This is totally optional on your part. If you don't have it, don't put it. If you have it, you can put it in. It has kind of a mix of um, 
basil, oregano, margarine, and thyme in it. Okay, we're just going to put one teaspoon because we already put oregano and stuff, so we don't want to over season it. But believe me, it's ready. Yes, so we're going to mix this up again. Two tablespoons of flour. Now, flour kind of holds things together. So, are you saying it's a binder? It's a binder. Get some here. So there's one, two. And we're putting the flour in because we're going to add pine nuts and raisins. Half a cup of pine nuts. And then we're going to add um, a half a cup of raisins. Just good old raisins. These are high in iron, they're good for you. If you have iron deficient children or diets, uh, raisins are really good. Even though they're a natural fruit, they are high in sugar, but it's a natural sugar. But they're really good in meatloaf. It gives it just a little bit of sweet background flavor. And I love raisins in this. Not all meatloafs need raisins, but this one does. We're going to squish all this in there. You want it to get it all the way through. What I've done now is um, I have a, a cookie sheet that I put foil, but I also put ow, paper on top of it. And what you're going to do is we're going to pour our meatloaf or put it onto here get all the meat out of there and we're going to make it rectangle okay just push it out a layer of um, Swiss cheese can you tell I like Swiss cheese I love Swiss cheese Remember, it's yours. If you want more, add more. But we're going to put a, two kinds of cheeses on here. Let me move this down just a little bit. And this is good for like a dinner party because it looks fancy. All right, so now you have your Swiss cheese. That's a very important question. About one cup of baby spinach, okay? Tear it on here, put it on here. Make sure there's no really woody pieces. I got spinach everywhere. It's about one cup, of, you know, more or less. If you want more, add more. If you don't, then don't. Okay, you're just going to have your spinach here. And then I fried some bacon earlier to cook it to a crisp, crisp stage. Um, just kind of so that it gets a lot of rendered the fat out of it. But we're gonna layer some bacon on here. Wait, hold on. Bacon's optional if you don't want the problems of, you know, cooking your um, bacon ahead of time, then just don't add it. It's totally up to you. It adds a more little flavor as you go. So now you're layering it. So you have your Swiss cheese, we have your spinach, we have your bacon, and now we're going to add some povolone. Mmm! We're going to roll it. And you're going to start by holding your paper up like this and pushing it down. Let your paper work for you. Squeeze, squeeze. Make sure you end up with the seam side down. Just squeeze your stuff in here and squeeze it. In the end, that's okay. You know, it's too All right, isn't that beautiful? Now, whoops, 
this goes in the garbage and all these other pieces go in the garbage so what you want to do is you do not want to put any sauce on the top okay you're going to cook this for 35 to 45 minutes you're going to take uh, this over it just a little bit to coat it this will give you a um crispy outside just like that in the oven just like that. Soap and water, yay! Okay, um, everybody's oven varies, but 35, 45 minutes, somewhere around there. Um, and then you take it out. When you take it out of the oven, you must let it set for 15 minutes or more so that all the juice will redistribute on the inside and the cheeses so then when you slice it, it'll look like a jelly roll type of meatloaf, okay? So in the oven it goes, and voila! Are you okay, what we're making is a no-bake peanut butter chocolate dessert. And I've let my cream cheese, you're going to use 8 ounces of cream cheese, set out to thaw. Whoop. We're going to use peanut butter, chocolate pudding, and Annalise's favorite peanut butter cups. To take I was supposed to have I like chocolate cookies with chocolate cream filling you know but I couldn't find chocolate cream filling even the um, Oreos I was looking at they had pink they had green so I just went with vanilla start we're gonna put 16 cookies in here to beat them up Two tablespoons of butter. I have two tablespoons here. And we're going to melt it. Whoops. We want no paper in there. No mm. paper. No paper. We're going to melt it into microwave. Twenty seconds is probably all it takes. And then you keep beating your cookies up. Beep, 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 beep. Pour this into your melted butter. Everything's better with butter. butter. <laughs> we need the bag because we're going to crush some for the top. Okay. And we're going to stir it up. And just kind of keep crushing it as you go. Let's get our hands in there and we're going to push it into our pie plate. Okay? Still got some big ones. And just push it up the side a little bit. Now remember, whatever you put on top of the cookies here, uh, the, the liquid part softens the cookie and makes it really good and delicious. And then when the butter sets back, you can put it in a blender if you'd like. Okay, so now we have this in a separate bowl. We're going to get a good bowl here. We're going to add our eight ounces of cream cheese. Softened cream cheese. Yes. Make sure it's at room temperature. Okay, we're going to have cream cheese. Okay? And then you're going to put peanut butter. Funny. That is so true. So we have half a cup of peanut butter. We have eight ounces of cream cheese. Before I throw it away. You have half a cup of peanut butter. Then you're going to add one, in, um, one cup of confectioner sugar. Just, yeah. Okay. Um, all together, you'll use about a cup and a half. But in the, the filling part, we only want to use um, one cup. Okay. And then we're going to use half a tub of Cool Whip.
Here's the whole tub, eight ounce tub. But for the cream filling, we're only going to um, use half of it. Yes, this is powdered sugar. Okay. Okay. So we have our powdered sugar. We're going to need some more of that. And we have, and we're going to put, um, we're going to put in some Cool Whip here in a minute. First, we're going to beat this. Then you're going to add half your um, tub of Cool Whip. So just kind of put that little imaginary line there and put your Cool Whip in here. Fold that in. Don't beat it in. Just kind of fold it in. There we go. All right. Then what we're going to do is take Reese's peanut butter cups, about 15 miniature cups. I sat and took all of the wrappers off of them and we're going to chop them up and that's your next layer. Okay? So what you're going to do in another mixing bowl, we're going to beat one cup of cold milk. Let me get the milk. 2% either one. Okay? And one package, which is a 3.9 ounce of instant, instant fudge pudding mix. Okay? Let me put the milk in. We're going to put in our other half a cup of confectioner sugar. I threw it in the thing, so I'll put two one fourths. Okay, that makes half a cup. Okay. Then you're going to put, stir in your other half of your Cool Whip. Okay. Set kind of hard. And um, your Cool Whip. Okay. And you're going to pour that over this mixture. We I put down that you need chocolate, 20 chocolate cookies. And we started with 16 for the crust. And we're going to put the other ones in here and we're going to decorate. Okay, we're going to crush them up. And Did that, you use Oreos for this? Oh, absolutely, yes. And why fact, did we not use Oreos for this? Um, this, this, these were on sale. We got a couple peanut butter cups, mm. and we're gonna undress them. <laughs> undress them, right? And you just kind of want to do that. go in the fridge and chill it should be a minimum of three hours but we'll see after we get done three hours torture pie torture pie <laughs> of the goodness underneath can you see it yep all right oh my gosh look at that meatloaf oh look at the onions brown and the pine nuts and it makes it very sweet oh. now i'm going to cut it right in the middle to see if the middle is done and if not we'll put it back in the oven see it is done and this is how you serve it you just slice it and serve it oh my and, gosh um you're gonna let the oil grease and everything redistribute and then enjoy serve it with mashed potatoes or and it is an awesome meatloaf. So I hope you've enjoyed today. 
With our semi Sicilian, I want to let it cool and redistribute the meat, and then we're going to enjoy the meatloaf for dinner.